Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, I'd like to start a brand new topic, combinatorics. And the first part is uh, related to a concept called permutations. Well, um, generally speaking about combinatorics, I like this particular topic. It's quite interesting um, in, one, uh, in one aspect. If you're talking about, um, let's say, algebra solving equations, well, either you solve it or you don't. Um, geometry, proving a theorem. I mean, either you go logically step by step and you basically um, prove it or, or, or you don't. In combinatorics, the problem is calculate something. And um, you're thinking that you're approaching the problem correctly and you get some answer and it does not correspond to the answer in, in the textbook, let's say. So you're thinking differently and, uh, well, you get the different result, uh, which also might or might not correspond to the textbook answer. So my point is that in combinatorics, um, your mind should be very, very sharp to, like, think about all the possibilities, all the different variations or whatever. So all the incorrect um, answers to the problems uh, are lying quite closely to the correct ones. So if in, in algebra either you solve it or you don't, they are very much far apart. In, in combinatorics, correct and incorrect answers might be very close. Um, and uh, every time you think about the problem slightly differently, you might get the different results. So that's why it's very important to, to go through lots of problems, um, make a lot of mistakes, quite frankly, and gradually develop your, your sense of how to solve the combinatorics problems correctly. Uh, it takes time and practice. So um, I'm planning to do um, more different problem solving in this particular um, uh, chapter of the partition of this course than, than usually, just because this is the most important uh, part of this, of, of this part, the problem solving. Because the definitions, if I will give you the formula and definitions, etc., that's simple. But to solve many, many problems which really use this type of logic, these formulas or whatever, um, to come up with some correct result, that takes practice. And as I was saying, it's not very easy to differentiate between the right and wrong. So that's why your mind should be very much sharpened to do this type of thing. So, today is uh, permutation. So, first of all, generally speaking, what permutation is. Permutation is um, a task of putting certain number of objects in certain order. For instance, <coughs> For instance, you have to um, go to three different places. Let's call it A, B, and C. You have to visit them. Let's say it's a Mother's Day and uh, you have a grandmother, another grandmother, and, uh, and, and the wife to basically congratulate with the Mother's Day or something like this. So the question is, which order you prefer to do this? Well, you can do it in order A, B, C or you can do, do, it, do it in order RC. So, A, C, B. There are no more different orders when A is the first one. So after A, it's either B, C or C, B. Now, on the first place, you can visit B. And then you can have, again, two different things, A, C or C, A. Finally, your first choice may be the place C, after which you have two different variations. So these are all different orders. Three objects, A, B, and C, can be put uh, in sequence one after another. <coughs> all right, so it's six, right? Six different variations. Now, let's get a little bit more general. Um, problem. Let's say you have n different objects. So you have n different objects. Well, let's think about it this way. 
you have let's say a, a pile of n objects and you would like to put them in 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 in, in line um, for instance uh, let me just give you another example before this uh, if you are in command of a group of soldiers and you have to put them in line you can put them in line by by their height let's say order them by height from tallest to the uh, to the shortest or from shortest to the tallest or alphabetically by their last names or by color of their hair from dark to uh, light or from light to, to dark I mean in any order so these problems really occur and question is how many different ways of putting this number of soldiers into a line um, can be so let's get to the general problem of n objects which are just piling somewhere and you are putting them in order well for the element number one in our ordered set of n objects we have a choice to make we have n different objects so for number one we can we, we have n different choices right okay so let's just write it down so n different choices now after we have made a choice for a position number one in our row we have to make a choice for the second now there are n minus one elements left in this pile right and each one of them can can be number two so it looks like for every choice we made for number one and there are n of these choices we have n minus one choices for object number two and for each pair of two first objects we have how many are left n minus two right so we have n minus two choices for the position number three so we are continuing this um, process and we are multiplying the number of our choices because with every number of choices we made already we still have so many choices to make for the next step so it goes up to the very last one so the the one before last we had two choices left and then there is only one so it looks like this might be the formula for the number of permutations of um, n objects the number of ways we can order these n uh, objects into one one row uh, by the way a permutation usually is uh, symbolically designated as this <coughs> all right now this is where many textbooks are actually ending the explanation um, about what is the number of permutation they give this formula and by the way this formula has a shorter notation and factorial and factorial is the product of all natural numbers from 1 to n n is assumed to be a natural number integer positive so for every integer positive number and factorial is the product of all the numbers from 1 to this number which is exactly this one um, obviously it doesn't really matter the order from n to 1 or from 1 to n because the uh, multiplication is uh, commutative so in most cases this is the formula where uh, textbooks are, are ending their explanation I would like actually to move a little bit further um, we are trying to make this course as rigorous as possible and in this particular case I'm just explaining basically in, in words how the permutation goes and the number of different choices to make etc it's not a really mathematical proof and I would like to prove it more or less rigorously mathematically so to speak all right so how can I prove that the number of permutation is such and such well the, the, the perfect way to prove this is induction mathematical induction so let's just think about what if I have um, um, now to prove by induction I have to do three steps right 
um, check if the formula is correct for some initial number, like n equals to 1, for instance, then assume that for certain number n equals to, chi, to k formula is, is correct, and then derive from this that the formula is correct for the next n is equal to k plus 1. So that's what I'm going to do. All right, step number one is to check that the permutation of one element is exactly one factorial. Well, one factorial is one, and a, a product of all numbers from one to one, which is one, and permutation of one element. Well, how many times, if I have only one element, how many times I can put it in order? Well, there is no other element, so there is only one way. This is element number one, and the last, the first and the last element, right? So this formula actually is correct for n is equal to one. All right, second. Let's assume that for some n equal to k, the formula is correct. Now, let's check what happens for the next. So. Let's assume we have k plus 1 objects. <coughs> what I will do, I will separate this pile of k plus 1 objects into k, first k if you wish, and separately 1. So I'll just pick up one object, doesn't matter which one, just pick it up. So now I have a, a group of k um, objects in my pile, and um, to, to make the whole thing in order, I will first order in some way my remaining k objects, and then I will put this k plus, k plus first object somewhere among the, uh, among the first k's, right? So, if I, ca if I have k objects which are remained uh, in the pile after I extracted one, um, this by our assumption, um, I, I can put these k uh, different objects into um, a, a, an order in k factorial um, different ways, right? That's our assumption. So let's assume that this is some way we have placed our um, k objects. In this case, k is equal to 4. And now I have one more object which I picked up from the from the pile before. I can put it here. I can put it here, 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 and here. Each way doesn't really matter where exactly I put it, but every time I put it, I will get a certain uh, row of k plus one objects, right? <coughs> I can put it here, 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 and here, and this is my k objects, right? And with this one, it will be k plus 1. So, as soon as I did that, from the combination which I had, I will obtain a new combination of all k plus 1 objects, right? How many? Well, with each combination of the k objects, I have additionally how many of those guys? How many places? K plus one. Before zero, between z uh, I mean bef before first element, from first to second, from second to third, etc. From k minus one to k, and then after k, right? So it's I I if these are k objects, there are k plus one uh, places where I can put my k plus first object. Before the first, in between, and after the last. So it looks like with every combination of the k objects, I have k plus 1 different combinations of k plus 1 objects, right? Because for each one of these, I can have this k plus 1 objects placed in k plus 1 different places. So with each of these, I have k plus 1 new uh, positions of the k plus 1 objects. So it looks like my formula <coughs> for number of permutations of k plus 1 elements should be equal to 
number of perm permutations of the k elements and since for each of these guys I have k plus 1 new permutations of the total so that is supposed to be the true statement and obviously if k factorial is a pk k factorial times k plus 1 it's actually k plus 1 factorial right because k plus 1 factorial is the number uh, is the product of all uh, uh, natural numbers from 1 to k plus 1 which is from 1 to k and k plus first right so that actually proves that the formula is exactly the same for k plus 1 so this is a proof by induction which I think should make you feel a little better um, because we have rigorously uh, well as rigorously as we could actually prove this uh, the validity of this formula um, and in, instead of just you know giving it to you based on certain philosophical discussions right so but anyway the formula is very simple this factorial thing is really very helpful to short uh, hand the the, the the product of all the numbers from one to this particular uh, given number anyway <coughs> uh, this is the, the the final result I wanted to present to you the permutations of certain number of objects number of permutations um, now I assume that objects are different um, because if the objects are the same you will not be able to differentiate one permutation from another and this is yet another uh, problem in combinatorics which we will address but right now we're talking about um, uh, different objects and different objects which are positioned in certain order and the question is how many different orders of positioning of these n objects exist and the answer is n factorial okay <coughs> um, I do recommend you as usually to uh, use the Unisor website not just the YouTube lecture and uh, the website contains notes for this and all other lectures and also it provides you the ability to sign in and uh, uh, take exams uh, all it requires is actually to have some kind of a supervision uh, and uh, enrollment into the courses everything is completely free so you're welcome um, I do recommend to read again the notes for this lecture and it has this proof by induction uh, I think it's always helpful to refresh your your memory so thanks very much and good luck <laughs>